Well, good lunch time. It is March the 14th at 12 noon, and we're ready to start the Mechanical Code 2021 IMC. Hey, Tom, how are we doing today? Well, I'm doing just fine. We'll just get right into it. To the 2021 Mechanical Code, and this becomes effective July the 1st. The 2021 Mechanical Code comes effective May 1st to where it matches its brother and sister of its strong arm, the Arkansas Building Code is July 1. Okay. Which the July 1 will be when we get further into the duck blasting. That's when that will go in effect. And, and to be honest, we're we're going to, you know, we're going to catch the guys in the field and use a, a grace period, training period to where by July 1, hopefully we can have everybody on the same page and everything just kind of roll together. I understand. Okay. Our first item is drain lines and condensate pumps. Yes, sir. This is a new one. Uh, all your primary water dis distribution, let's put it like that, and, and, and get out of the mindset of condensate and think about, okay, I got a water that comes from my furnace. We need to know. And we have installation instructions that state that furnace can't be common drain with the evaporator drain. You've got two pipes there. What, what's going to happen in the future? Any water, that, any water that's supposed to be dispersed from that structure whether we're going to call it condensate, whatever, that will come out and the pipe will be identified as green as go. If you have white pipes out there and there's water coming out of them, that's to identify and notify the homeowner, consumer, whoever, that's not good. So all of the primary drain, if we have a concealed location, which in all new construction now, your drain lines are concealed. They either run them down a wall, through a back deal, where it comes out of the structure, if it's the dispersed water, we will identify that by green. Uh, I like the Sharpie. I like the tape and the paint better. The Sharpie <laughs> will hold on for a while. It'll pass inspection and eventually fade. The paint and the tape could do the same, but that's what it'll take to pass inspection. Well, and, I just uh, put the stickers on there as a joke. You know, after oh, all, I like it's the March stickers. Of St. Patrick's Day. The lucky. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> but you're going to start seeing the manufacturer's instructions. A lot of the Cat 3 furnaces in the attic in a horizontal position are starting to go, okay, Cat furnace drain is independent by itself from the evaporator drain. So now you've got two primaries right there. So you've and we get in some of these. Coming out that's both going to be green? Yes, the primary will be green. Huh. It can be one at just the end of it. We just, it needs to be identified. I got that, you. So when they make the inspection, they'll know that's where our water's supposed to come from. Right there. Okay. Well, let me let me ask another question then, because you've got your secondary drain. Does that not get marked? A lot. If you run a true secondary drain, no, it does not. If, okay. If, uh, I know some contractors in Oklahoma that really do that. You'll see a, a primary and a secondary actually PVC. They they go to the trouble on new construction to do that. It's cheaper than the switches. Uh, but uh, it is not to be marked. That's correct, because we don't want to see the water in there. If I we guess. do see it coming out, and the auxiliary drain, same thing. See it coming out, that's to uh, notify them that we got a problem. All right, the next one, drain line maintenance. Drain line maintenance. Uh, this is an air handler in a vertical position, which per its manufacturer's instructions required a trap, where, and several, I think Tom might have some more pictures here, mm -hmm. uh, you have to provide drain line maintenance or via bleach clean out, airline, whatever you want to use it or call it, above the trap, before the trap. You will have to clean the trap out. If your instructions call for like that, this picture he's showing here is, is wrong. Uh, once we go to the new code, where that T is or that, that 90 degree elbow, that's where the clean out would have to be. This is, I think, truly built as a, a vent instead of a clean out. But we do have to have a clean out uh, to clean out the trap. If you have a vertical unit that the manufacturer's instructions state there is no trap, then you'll just come out and put your little clean out right at the T and drop straight down and move on. Well, to chase a rabbit here, I, for years, I, I never quite understood the vent anyway because I'm not a plumber. But in this particular clay case, they're showing a picture that the, uh, the vent has a cap on it. Why would they do that? Well, because you're in a positive pressure, you're not in a, you're not in a counterflow. So where you're drawing across the coal with the blower, you're 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 positive. You are though on air handlers, it gets confusing because the air handler's at the bottom, blower's at the top, versus mm -hmm. a furnace where the blower's at the bottom, 
heat exchanger at the top were positive flowing through the evaporator, that's where a lot of the manufacturers do not require the 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 track to keep the so it doesn't siphon is whatever. This, even though it's vert, vertical position, you're still pulling across the evaporator instead of blowing over through it. You could right. get an issue. That, Here's one. Cap, he's having to cap that to make sure it will will siphon. Here's your next one that shows it. I guess is this one done correctly? Yes, this one is, and this this is showing the new little. Uh, He's actually got a T on the backside, but this there's a little new device. It's a new elbow or T. I'm sorry, it's a T that has just a little red cap that you can pull out of that mm -hmm. and not run a stand up arm or whatever. That's fine too. You can pull that out. That's a maintenance maintenance uh, T to clean that out, and it's going. And then they're using their little giant pump. This is in a basement area. They're using a little giant pump to disperse the air up and get it above grade and get out away. Okay, here's a here's something that I got from the uh, HVAC school uh, website. What do you think about this one? That's per okay. Carrier Train do that. They do a uh, the clean out. You got your clean out maintenance, and then they want a vent. They have that in their manufacturer's instructions. That's of course is a it's a draw through coal. It's not a positive coal. It's a draw through coal, and they. R&D says this is how we want our units run for our condensate drain to, to ensure continuous flow on the condensate. We don't want it siphoning back and forth. You will see that on train as well. See that, I, I hate to admit it. This one, I understand the others. I'm a little bit in the dark, but let's move on. Okay. Condensate shutoffs, the little giant pumps. I call them little giant, whatever brand you use, diverse tech, whatever. If you're starting to use those when we go into new code, which you and I have gone around with the distributors to try to head this off, those pumps must have a shutdown device. Uh, most of them have informed us they're already there, their head that all of those have where you can wire the red in. If that sail switch or backup float switch in the pump fails, it's to kill the unit. That control voltage is wired through that little, little pump to shut the unit down. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's in our code now. All right, here's an example of a pump that could be used. Yep, and it flips over. And the back side of that on the last page, it shows you the different variations and shows you the wiring to where, yep, it's a kill. It's got that last switch that'll kill the entire operation. So unit shut down completely. Bath exhaust ventilation. Okay, bath exhaust ventilation will stop going into the soffit July 1. Uh, you're bidding these houses, you're pushing against the flow of what the soffit was designed for, even though we deleted chapters 13, 14, 15 in our last building code. We are not. We are adopting those in those entirety because they match with the mechanical code. And you will no longer put bath exhaust or kitchen exhaust in the soffit. Fresh air, makeup air, the makeup air that if you design to pull it in on your return will be the only thing in the soffit. So this combination kit is the kit they're showing. I have, I'm still trying to find one where you're going to a high gable end or on the roof. They do make one where you have one, one termination that allow two bath exhausts to tie into it. it. Allows you to cut one opening is what it does. Okay. Clothes dryers. Yes, we will be regulating clothes dryers again. Uh, I do know that as of today, during our public hearing comment, we do have one individual that does not agree with this, uh, that wants to make their peace with this, uh, but it is what it is. It's in the code, it's in the building code. And the reason it's in the building code, because it it allows the, the builder, if the heat and air person's not doing it, the builder can run it. However, it's gonna be inspected, it's gonna meet the fire code, and to do so, it will be 28 gauge metal now. They changed what, the British 301 changed what was defined combustible and limited combustible to where a duct that's truly non-combustible is of 28 gauge thickness. So the dryer, if it's above the slab, will be 28 gauge sheet metal, not the 30 gauge that we allow them to use for supply duct. That picture is a good picture. They've changed the wording. Now your, your dryer exhaust will be supported four foot intervals, vertical and horizontal. So when you start going vertically, well, you know you're at eight foot wall, you're gonna to have to support that somewhere in there. A lot of the walls are nine, 10 foot. They will be supported vertically at four and horizontally at four. 
in the walls, the clean out, when you go vertical, the mandatory clean out is that pan. Flex connector is not deemed the clean out. That pan is. Hmm. And that will be on a six inch wall from now on. It won't be on a two before wall since they won't go to the outside wall, but the pans, they will not be selling the four inch pan anymore. It will be a six inch pan to ensure that duct didn't get ovaled up like a, a track and field. Uh -huh. It's supposed to stay its circumference all the way through. So after what, June the 1st, if a contractor goes out and he's getting ready to run the dryer vent and he sees that it's on a two before wall, what does he do? They need to get with the plumbers and, and we need to know on the plumbing rough, that's going to two by six wall. Mm -hmm. So we need to, the builders and, uh, and them need to know, we need to lay that, that bathroom needs to be a two by six wall now. I got so you. If you're not going to put it, if you're going to put it on a two before wall, you better hope it's an outside wall. So you're not going vertically. You're just yeah, stubbing okay. through the wall. I see. Here's another example of the same thing, except we're in kind that's, of interior right. wall. That's the depth pan in a two by six fall. And uh, it, it gives you the room to have your two inches of dropping in to get your hands all the way around it to put your transition duct, the flex duct to it and clamp it down. Okay. There's a two by four on a two by six wall. And you see what it did to the pipe. Yeah. I don't know if we put the other, but it, it ovaled it and it's already splitting on the other side. Yeah. That yeah. is the new code that talks about the duct will not be diminished. It will stay at same circumference all the way through via kicking that pan out. So this would not be allowed. Not after these apartments are in the, in the process of being built right now. But when we go to purchasing a new permit for new construction after that uh, May 1st, no, it would not. Okay. Okay, typical typical dryer exhaust running out. And the next picture, I believe, shows the support every four foot. You'll notice he supported each elbow, which is good, so it won't broke. And then he went four foot, and he's got another band in there. That's, uh -huh. that's good. Power ventilators. I don't have that. I tried to get that picture, and I apologize for it. It's a booster. Uh, you can't use the booster fans anymore. Some are doing the only one approved for extending these dryer links up to 70, 80, 90 feet is a power ventilator and it will be the UL705. It's the high dollar one. The, we try to remind these guys that that's appliance. If you're gonna carry it 80 feet from that room and it's in the attic, now you've gotta have access to it. It has to have a disconnect. It has to be maintained, pressure switches. So you have to have your walking, standing platform, so forth to maintain that appliance. Kitchen exhaust falls under the same thing. The 28 gauge sheet metal, uh, the smooth, it's got to be smooth pipe. You can't use the flexible. They run smooth pipe to a certain point. Go, well, the cabinet guys, and they drop that flex thing in there. It's got to be piped all the way to the top of the appliance. 28 gauge. 28 gauge. So I, I put this slide in there just in case people get a little confused. When we're looking at the kitchen exhaust and the closed dryer exhaust, they both require 28 gauge. Right. And, uh, you know, these guys, these poor heat and air guys out here and, and these folks are buying these appliances and they say, well, I'm putting this 600 CFM exhaust fan over my Paula Dean oven I put in my house. But a heat and air man gets out there and he sees it's got a six inch takeoff on it. Huh. Do not believe that 600 CFM. It is not. And don't worry with trying to do a makeup. Just vent that thing out with your six inch and move on about your business. Earnest connection. Yes, the NFPA requirements. I know we keep bringing this up, uh, but I keep getting hit about this. And we've had some fires up in northwest Arkansas, some apartments. Duck board burned through the element. That's exactly why it has to be non-combustible. It's got to be the three-foot minimum on the supply, two-foot minimum on return. Most of the guys you see do a four and four square duck and the guys that have not seen this are like what's he talking about well just keep doing what you're doing weatherproof barriers mastic and insulation weatherproof barriers yes this is a new one but uh not uh weatherization but weatherproof which stops aspirilla penicillin they, these little penicillin spores from growing on the inside like this where it gets on the other part of inside the duck and starts growing in there so that old paint on duck there, not approved. Now the hard cast tape that you put and how hard smooth that down is approved or there is a external insulation. You're starting to see a lot of the new schools that has the this duck right here. Now that's pricey. 
I'm seeing a lot of architects and engineers design that. That, that is a true weatherization, weatherproof barrier for exposed duct. Now, there is still old school. You can still go back and build the cover duct. If you want to line it internally, just build your metal duct over it, that's fine. But once we come and try to go up the wall, it's kind of hard to start building cover ducts. It gets all everywhere. But that's that's that big tape. You smooth it down. That is a true weather barrier. So that's <laughs> being required on exposed exterior ducts. You know, Tony, I was looking up some duct today. I mean, the, the uh, mastic today. And some of them said that they were weatherproof. And some of them said they were weather resistant. Weatherproof is what we got to have. Weather resistant is not. That kind of breaks my heart because the people I used to use, their their material is weather resistant. And boy, they've got some good stuff, but I guess it shouldn't be used out. Use it quick. Okay. Uh, kind of an update on the metal gauges, putting the commercial and residential side by side so people can get a chance to see what they need to do. Right. Now, there you go. Four to 10 inch. That is the kick that we, that's what you are allowed in supply duck only. I mean, you, if you have an eight inch return duct, which is very odd, you might or 10, but that's in your single family dwelling. And then once you go up and gauge, these are all correct. Uh, but the 30 gauge is not allowed in anything but that supply. So, um, you know, several distributors have told me that we're just stocking 28 and 26. I know the cost is through the roof. Everybody's trying to cut cost. But boy, callbacks and ripping duck out. Mm. Cost more too, especially with four dollar a gallon gas going back and forth. Make sure where you're using your gauge metal in the correct locations. Okay, new construction, single family dwelling, new construction will require duct blast test as of July one. Uh, duct duct leak test, duct blast test, the word whatever you use, it will be tested. Not blower door, but we will take the duct leakage of the duct system. From that date on, once you purchase your permit after July 1 in your building, that will require that duct to be tested. One of the things that the association did last uh, fall was to conduct a series of classes on blower door and duct blaster. And we'll be ramping up with another bunch of them this coming fall. Tom, I, these little chat deals, these people, are you answering those? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm about to ask you okay. a question right now. Okay. And that is... Uh, James wanted to know whether or not continuing education will be required for a license for renewal this year. We're going to try to implement that. I, I, I'm going to lean towards January 1 and on. We're, will we try to have classes before then? Yes. Uh, but I would say the renewal for this, this year to December 31st will probably not. I know after our meeting, the 13th, we're going into – Lindsay and I are going to try to find some hours. <laughs> We're going to try to, to get that going. Uh, of course, I know we might do things with the HVAC Association, uh, but we're hoping to have that up and going by January to where you've already attended some classes and starting those first quarter folks who license expires in February, March, they will have attended something in the fall that will give them the hours and we can start the process and move forward then. One other question, then we'll close it out. Can bath exhaust still go through the soffit to a termination cover? Not after you purchase the permit for the house after May 1, no. The gotcha. only thing in the the only thing in the soffit will be mechanical fresh air. Gotcha. Well, we've got we've got some other folks wanting to ask some things, but we have run out of time. Tony, let's uh, let's do another session on the codes that we have yeah. not even covered to date uh, and do it in April. Would that be okay? That'd be good. And if if you could compile these questions, maybe we can touch on, because I just, one popped up. It's popping up on mine and then going away real quick, but one was asking the percentage. So pretty good questions here we can address next month. Yeah, yeah uh, we're getting some notes from the administrative staff uh, on what they see and also about, you know, how much, what the duct test will be required to be. Right. But those things are things we're still working out, aren't we? Yes, sir. Look it up. Uh, Tony, I appreciate you so much, and I appreciate the Department of Labor and Licensing allowing us to do this. This is a unique outreach to the industry that's being regulated. I don't know of any other regulatory agency that's doing anything like that. So, you know, hats off to Labor and Licensing and to you, Tony, for having time to do it. We'll do it again next April, the 11th. Alrighty.